Yep, you're welcome. Okay, today is Tuesday. <laughs> I uh, should have been here a little bit earlier, but no one told me I had an emergency primate waiting. And uh, and this little girl had drove all the way from Florida. There you are. Hey, what are you saying? Sorry, <laughs> right, you Um, <laughs> that means what? Yeah. Anyway, our girl here has colitis. Have you been seen by another vet this morning already? Or not not today, today. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to, to statistics in my job, and if you know, this guy's here as well, so I'm gonna bear with me and listen to this stuff again. <clears throat> when it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to statistics, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to uh, and I've made this statement before on other videos that, uh, you know, we, we have seen an occasional constipation, but for the most part, physically speaking, it's usually colitis. If I'm going to put another extra on top of that, the most common would be bacterial, and after that, it becomes fungal, and then viral. Anyway, so having put those in mind, those of you out here who have an animal who's trying to poop, I want you to think very carefully if there was a point in time that it did not poop, okay? If there was a serious point in time that it did not poop, then chances are there might be some poop in there. But if it has poop and all of a sudden you see sudden straining, then chances are it's a colitis, which means you don't want to give an animal, you don't want to give laxatives, because you're taking an animal who's already pretty well dehydrated and you're making their life that much worse. <clears throat> which is funny because in the last six months I've seen several animals, you know, go in for for the same situation and not come out of a hospital because people were too worried about it being constipated and not actually looking for the sign or clinic, the clinical signs. In other words, if, you, if you're a vet and you just stick something in a, in a monkey's butt and it doesn't go because there's something in the way, let's call it constipation. But if you get something on the end of your sample, then obviously nothing's caused. Okay? So, having said that, <laughs> this one here, having pulled out a completely liquid sample, um, was under the microscope and saw tons and tons of strep and saw some rods, a little bit of a brio, um, and I saw one small protozoa trying to make its way through the world, um, or through the monkey's world. So we're going to go ahead and send home a mixture of sanitary. Um Also in the sample of urine that we got the bottom of the cage, we definitely have a bladder infection. We have white blood cells in the urine, which miraculously, according to you, other veterinarians out there reading this, will work on the average human primate strip. And red blood cells will also work as well. And if you look at them on a the microscope, you can identify the bacteria that's causing the problem. Anyway. So we have a bacterial cystitis, we have a bacterial colitis, and now that I've actually looked at the urine and the stool and I have seen strep twice, we might want to assume that whatever species of strep this is, has caused this monkey's problem. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to go ahead and send home a little care package with some Gatorade and a syringe. Over here we have, uh, it's like I've made monkey food twice today. Um, <laughs> Some frozen veggies and fruits are going to go home. I actually made this stuff for Daisy and I keep them here at the office. There's even some yogurt drops and some things to entice her to eat on the way back to Florida. Um, and they can also stop and get some fruit juice or whatever else they, they have that she's just her favorite. Anyway, we didn't have to sedate her. We actually called her up with a glove. And then once she realized I wasn't trying to eat her, she relaxed a little bit and we got our sample for our, uh, our fecal sample. Anyway, so her lungs are clear, her eyes are clear. Although I did not put a stethoscope on her chest because I could not grab a stethoscope in her with the gloves that I had. <laughs> I'm pretty sure her heart is okay. We may explode in the near future if Dad keeps feeding marshmallows, but for now it's good. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, this is this is a very good training monkey. <laughs> if any of you animal trainers out there want to turn one of these guys around, this is the one to do right here. Um, she has trained this human to feed jelly beans, marshmallows. You gonna confess some other stuff while we're at it? No. No? <laughs> you're kind of in a <laughs> I just want to show your face just in case you wanted somewhere that way I'm you know, guilty of nothing. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna cover her a second and, and just uh, make her a little bit angrier, but looking at her face, we'll have this conversation. It's just more, more fun than, than the average human should have. Hey, hey, hey. What? Oh no. Please don't. <laughs>
but I can back up more. Ha ha. <laughs> All right. That's five minutes of rambling right there. The main problem, you know, yes, the main problem was the strep in there. Well, let's just say that uh, remarkably we found strep both in the uh, the urine sample and we also found strep in the colon sample. Okay, and lots of it in both. You said blue blood as well as that? would be called with the Um, oh, it's four letters, like with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Okay. okay. Now, I could culture it. But it turns out a lot of the cultures that you may send out to a lab might come back negative, especially when it comes to small intestinal or colon problems, because the, the way that the, the, the oxygen may respond, okay, to these organisms, it keeps them from growing it in the so calling it make, making sure it's a strep, that just means characteristically it looks like a, a beaded chain under the microscope. But there are many, 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 many species of that kind of organism. Okay. So I can't tell you what species, but I can narrow it down to a type of energy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Why are you so bad? You're done. No more poking stuff in your butt. This guy is what caused you to lie. Most likely. Okay. And there was also that one protozoa that I saw on that slide in the Vibrio. Vibrio is also one of those layman's terms for highly motile gram negative bacteria. The most common bacteria that we think are linear Vibrio when it comes to primates is Campylobacter jejuni. Okay? Um, also known for causing diarrhea and vomiting in humans as well. It actually uh, surpassed the number one cause of diarrhea in humans way back, I think, in the 60s and 70s with the CDC. Once they realized they could, you know, culture it and, and you know, replace it with their knowledge. It was, it's awesome that that worked out. That's a whole different story. So let me go there on this film. Um, <laughs> Would you say, as far as that as the boy goes, would I be, like, I mean, paranoid if I go ahead and just give him a little bit of panic here and not want to prevent it? I, as a general rule, we want to know what we're treating first, okay? okay? Um, if there's something else in him, you know, that might not be responding to those medications, then you may get some false hope and, okay. you know, so I would, you know, and again, I, would, I guess what worries me is, the people that you've taken from the past, have they ever done any direct fecal samples? They did a fecal the day before yesterday, supposedly. Uh, they didn't even take it to they did a fecal. And well, actually, I dropped it off that morning, I didn't call back. I decided, you know what, I'm going to bring it up here, it's an enema. And then as I'm leaving after they were already closed for the day, oh, did you get a chance to get a fecal? Oh, yeah, they did. They didn't find nothing. I have a feeling they didn't do it. Well, there's two basic kinds of tests about your medicine. Okay, this is called a concentration technique, which every veterinarian does. Okay. And then there's your, your live techniques, like your, your directs, where I actually take a drop of feces and I put it on a slide and I mix it with some sterile water, and then I'm looking for things that are swimming around. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to separate, okay, the, 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 the parasite from the fluid itself. I want to see them whole, okay? okay? And in doing so, if there's some overly active protozoa that you wouldn't see on the float technique, okay, then you would never know it's there. But most of them is just the flow technique. So yeah. that wouldn't have shown the like the They would have been completely negative and they would have known what was going on. Okay. That's such a sad thing. Hmm. If you can make your lips move, it'd be awesome. <laughs> oh my hate. Let's not get this weird. Okay, this case actually took a pretty bad turn for the worst. Between uh, this hospital taking care of him in this state and two states over, it also working with the other hospital. Um, either discommunication between the hospitals, the clients, or something. Anyway, it seemed like I was on the phone with these guys daily. Um, they sent me an x-ray. The x-ray looked questionable as far as the foreign body goes. Um, and uh, it turns out that the uh, monkey did have an interception. That's where the intestines actually telescope onto each other and cause a, a minor blockage. So there was never a complete blockage, but there was enough um, of a blockage to cause this monkey to actually uh, to die. Anyway, um, she died in, in Florida, and she died with the family. But uh, it was really a sad case. All right, later.